Well, we would like to have people understand that the term tram stamp is a derogatory slur. That it is not cute or funny. It is. It comes from a place of trauma, and that being that someone has been taken, their identity has been taken from them. They are now claimed as a piece of property. They have usually the brand is their pimp's name, and they usually get branded several more times with mile markers regarding. It could be, I don't know if I can say this, but it could be their first gangbang. It could be a mile marker for how many clients that they've taken on. If they're you, sold to another group. Mm -hmm. um, for how many years they've been in. So they're just re-traumatizing all the time. And it's typically not a usual tattoo where you sit down and you ask for a nice pretty design. It's something where you're held down against your will and they are digging in so it doesn't come off. They want it to be deep and raised and scarred like a brand so it's something that you can't remove. And, and I would also like to say that lower back tattoos are not the only place that they brand you. There's um, usually the backs of the thighs, upside down images, and um, if they have the words of their pimp on the back of their neck, upside down is usually a sign. It's always on the back side, and it's always something that you can just, it just disgusts me to think that they're doing this, so no matter what position you're in, they know that you belong to somebody else. To make sure that no matter what, that people know this person is the property of this person. And this is what they're used for. Mm -hmm. But they're not humans. Mm -hmm. And even if no one else can see it, you know it's there, you see it every time you get out of the shower, and that's what you hold with you, you know, it's, it's invisible to other people, but it, it's your identity. Um, we ask that people have been out of sex trafficking for at least six months that they have been in counseling and that they're giving back to the community in some way, some kind of volunteer program. And we ask what, ask them to uh, write up what a cover-up tattoo would mean to them. Right, um, how it would benefit them, how mm -hmm. it might change, how they would view, right. that it would change their own outlook on themselves. I have some basic rules for cover-up, which would be the new tattoo needs to be at least three times larger mm -hmm. than the old tattoo and the old tattoo is gonna be placed in the background somewhere so it's not a focal point. So you need to make sure it's large enough that you have something to look at, that that's just kind of in the mix back there, covered up that you're not focusing on. Because when you've been scarred with a tattoo like that, it's almost like branding where it raises the skin. Even if I were to do anything on top of that, even if it's just a blackout, you're gonna see in the light where it's all raised up. So I try to like make it into like leaves and swirlies and things that are just kind of, you know, the background and then the foreground being the new focal point. And I want it to be something beautiful and feminine and a nice piece of artwork that's just for them.